All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Keenan Tyner Smith. My pronouns are she and her. Welcome to our monthly hybrid Southside Wellness Coalition meeting. Um, joined here, uh, hybrid format with the in person location in Clarksville, and then, of course, our hybrid location with on the Zoom. So, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to get started um, with sharing um, the agenda um, and looking at the minutes. Um, and introductions. Um, so sharing screen this morning, <clears throat> just to briefly run down our agenda before we get started. That should be coming up on your screen. Um, so the morning again, beginning at 10 o'clock, here at our two wonderful locations. Uh, we'll be looking at the minutes. We have a presentation by Dr. Carlin Raffi of Virginia Tech Halifax Seed Initiative this morning followed up with updates on all of our various projects currently happening this month and talking about the many outreaches we've been doing over the last few weeks and then certainly sharing the upcoming events um, in person as well as virtually. And just to remind you here at the very beginning that our next leadership team meeting is August the 9th. Our next general meeting again will be hybrid on August 17th. Um, please make sure that you're checking that you are receiving our monthly newsletter um, and also um, that you're receiving uh, any information through the links to the newsletter. If you ever have any questions, you can reach out um, to our office at prevention at southsidebh.org. Um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and start with introductions before we return and go over last month's minutes. I'm going to start in the room and then I'm going to start on camera from my left to right. Um, Stephen, we'll start with you this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Stephen Wilson, a member of Mecklenburg County, also a member of the leadership team for the uh, Wildlands Coalition. Thank you. All right. And then I'm going to start on my top corner with Mackenzie. It's so nice to see everybody today. Um, so I'm the prevention specialist at Southside Behavioral Health. Um, I help Keenan. All right. And then we'll go to Jeanette. Good morning. My name is Jeanette Grimes. I am the community health worker in Brunswick County for the greatest group ever, Brunswick Health Ambassadors. Welcome. All right. Um, Elena, I believe. Um, hi, I'm Elena Martin. I'm the housing case manager with Tri County, and I am brand new. This is my first meeting, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So glad you're joining us. Um, Liam? Um, hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Liam Hudson. My pronoun are, pronouns are he, him. Uh, Elena, I have been in your shoes. Literally, you're going to be just fine. You got it. Um, uh, but I'm uh, the CEO of the Lean In Project uh, and the chair of the Wellness Coalition. Good to see you all this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kelly? I'm Kelly Fike. I am working with the Engaging Halifax Project through Virginia Tech. Um, I am the research oh. coordinator. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, Angela? Hi, good morning. I'm Angela Jameson. I'm the Community Engagement and Partnerships Coordinator at the VA. Um, I am covering for, if you all knew Tamika Tony, I am covering for her coalitions until um, her position is filled, which will probably be a very long time from now. And I'm happy to be here. Thanks for allowing me to be here. I provide um, technical assistance to coalitions. So if there's anything I can do to be helpful, please let me know. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Carlin? Hi, I'm Carlin Raffi. Um, I work with Kelly and Liam on the Engaging Halifax Project and um, kind of community engaged opioid responses in general. I'm an assistant professor at Virginia Tech in the Department of Human Nutrition, Foods and Exercise, but I work mainly with cooperative extension, which is um, in community education. So that's me. Awesome, welcome. Uh, Barbara? Uh, hi, I'm Barbara Johnson. I'm a community health worker with the Virginia Department of Health, and we serve Mecklenburg, Halifax, and Brunswick County, and 
just um happy to be here <laughs> We're so thankful you could join us. Thank you. Um, Jennifer? Good morning. I am Jennifer Fichtorn. I work with the Rural Opioids Technical Assistance Program and the Rural Health and Safety Education Program through Virginia Tech and VCE. I'm a statewide coordinator for both programs. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, Marianne? Um, good morning. I'm Mary Ann Crowder. I'm a member of the Southside Wellness Leadership Team. Um, I am on the leadership team or the lead for our Trauma-Informed Community Network, TARP. Um, and I work for Alara Health as a program analyst. Welcome. Thank you. And last but not least, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Price. I work with the University of Virginia Comprehensive Cancer Center in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And it's good to see everybody today. My pronouns are he, him, and his. Awesome. Good morning. So glad to see a lot of familiar faces and new faces this morning. So welcome, welcome. All right, so we'll go back um, and I went through the whole list. So we're gonna go back to the minutes from our June meeting. So let me share that screen and those in the room have a copy in front of them. Let's see, minutes from the last meeting, um, June 22nd. Again, a hybrid meeting here at Southside Behavioral Health, also on the Zoom. Uh, as always, you know that you can access those minutes um, through our newsletter that comes out each month as well as posted on bewellsouthside.org on our blog that keeps a hard copy of the minutes as well as the recorded session that we take each time. Um, we have many members present in person as well as in Zoom at the last meeting. Um, we went over the May minutes um, and then we had a presentation by our current chair, Liam Hudson on LGBTQ health and wellness. Um, we also talked about the development of the Trauma-Informed Care Network outreach. Um, Mary will be talking about that this morning, what, what was the outcome of the outreach that we did. Um, Sakova updates. We also talked about the YADAP team, which they're currently in Long at Longwood right now. So that's super exciting. Talked about our um, the leader of our uh, YADAP team last month, and we'll update again that this morning. Um, the Coalition Readiness and Effectiveness Assessment closed down at the end of June. We shared that. So we do have good news about that this morning now. And then, of course, all of our training announcements. So as I'm scrolling through these minutes, um, if you have any questions um, about last month's minutes, again, they were also shared in the monthly newsletter that came out earlier this week. If you have any questions, if you'll share them now, drop them in the chat box or turn on your microphone. All right, if there are no questions, can I get a motion to um, accept these minutes as they are? Make a All right, Stephen makes a motion. Can I get someone to second that, please? Liam. I Thank you, Keenan. And we just want to make sure that we're uh, testing your multitasking abilities this morning. Um, but yeah, thank you all for uh, having me today and being here today. Um, I'm mostly just uh, here to introduce Dr. Carlin Rafi uh, with Virginia Tech. Um, she is a member of the graduate faculty in the Behavioral and Community Science Department. Uh, she has worked with Previously, Henry County, I won't get too far into that because I know she's going to discuss that with you um, uh, and, and with the SEED initiative. Um, and so she's bringing that to Halifax with an effort called Engaging Halifax. Uh, and what 
she specializes in and is, is, is an expert in uh, is need-based community program development. And so um, we are utilizing the SEED methodology uh, for opioid-related need-based research uh, in Halifax County. So I'll turn it over to her to discuss that more deeply with you all. And I believe uh, Kelly Fike is also with us today. Uh, she is a member uh, um, at the Halifax Public Library, right, Kelly, and also uh, works with the uh, Cooperative Extension through Virginia Tech uh, and is uh, one of the partners and the co-leads in this initiative um, and is our boots on the ground, as they say, contact uh, in Halifax, along with Shannon, Shannon Simpson. Sorry, I am having difficulty with my words today, uh, who is off at 4-H camp and could not be here because she's probably um, betting a horse somewhere. So, probably having a much better, much better Thursday than, you know, uh, some of us, but hopefully not, hopefully we're all having pet and horse cow Thursdays too. Um, so yeah, I'll turn it over to Carla before I put my foot in my, my mouth anymore. Thank you. Liam, thank you. You did a great job. Um, so I wasn't, I'm not sure exactly how to present um, the project that we're doing to you all. I have a PowerPoint. I don't know if that would be appropriate to kind of show quickly show a PowerPoint to give you an, an idea of the process we're using. What I can uh, to introduce that PowerPoint presentation, um, basically uh, in response to the opioid epidemic that is all over the country, uh, and in particular, uh, some hard hit counties here in Virginia, a colleague of mine had developed a process for engaging communities in a really systematic way to help those communities identify and engage key stakeholders, people impacted by whatever the issue is, in this case, substance and opioid misuse, and engage those, those individuals at all levels, bring them together in a process where they um, systematically think about and diagram what's impacting the issue and then develop priorities and, uh, for action and, and then prioritize those and bring those back to the community for action. So that's the basic process. And uh, we applied that in Martinsville and Henry County with some real success. And so after having done that, we received additional, we applied for and received additional funding to expand that to other communities. And Halifax was one of those counties where we had some people working already, Shannon Simpson and a lot going on. And we said, let's Let's see if we can start this in Halifax. So we'd like to just let you all know what we're doing, just so you're aware, because I think you're big, you're very important stakeholders in this issue, and we, and we want to make sure you know what we're doing and hopefully participate as Kelly and the engaging Halifax team begins reaching out uh, for people who'd like to be involved and have input into the process. So, uh, Heyman, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Is, can I share my screen real quick? And I'll try to be... I'll try to be brief. So I'm going to kind of fly through these slides. I don't want to spend too much time of your meeting doing this, if it's possible. Oh, no, you're welcome. Um, yeah, I've made you co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Absolutely. And you're welcome to take however long you need. Okay, good. And I've kind of adapted a, a PowerPoint, and some of these slides may have gotten kind of, they may not be functioning like they should, but um, Hopefully, just excuse, just, sorry, just excuse me if that's the case. Oops, hold on, let's get out of that. I'm not on the right slide. Let's start here. So this is what we call it, uh, participatory action planning to address the opioid epidemic. Um, that's the logo for what, what we did in Martinsville and Henry County. We, we called that engaging Martinsville Henry County. And we're continuing to call then our projects in other counties by that same name, but basically, what we're trying to do is to develop, to gather stakeholders, stakeholders being anybody impacted by the issue at all. So people personally impacted by substance and opioid misuse, people working in the field, trying to help people with substance misuse, policymakers who influence what happens in the county around this issue, the education system, people working on prevention. So all of these are stakeholders. So we try to engage stakeholder groups to develop conceptual models related to this issue of opioid uh, misuse, abuse, and substance misuse as well. And then those teams of stakeholders actually, through this process, generate priorities 
for action. Those might be questions they want to have answered. It might be strategies they want to implement. It might be policies they want to put in place. But uh, they both think of, brainstorm, and then prioritize those. And then this, through the process, then we also facilitate the formation of work groups in the community to actually take action. So support for the actions as well. So we use a method called the SEED method. This was developed by my colleague, Emily Zimmerman at Virginia Commonwealth University. She's in the Society for um, Community and Health and she's the community engagement director. So she has a lot of experience in this method. And basically it's a method that brings together diverse, and that's the key word, diverse local stakeholders that then go through a process of exploring the causal factors leading up to whatever the health issue is, in this case, opioid and substance misuse. And then the, pro the method helps them develop and prioritize interventions and create multi-sector act action plans. This is an example of our, kind of our timeline for our Martinsville project. Um, and the steps of the process. So the first part of our process is first to form a, a community team that will drive the process, and that's Kelly and Liam and, and others. They have formed their team. So you have a team of local stakeholders that are, is um, driving the process, and they inform themselves about what's going on in the county as much as they can. And then they are the ones that then recruit, identify stakeholder groups, and begin recruiting individuals from the community who can participate in these stakeholder groups. We call them topic groups. Those topic groups meet on seven occasions. They develop conceptual models, the priorities, uh, the, the strategies for action, and then they prioritize that. And you can see that happens over about a three month period, those seven visits. And then those, what, the, what they come up with is brought back to the broader community and the broader stakeholders to, um, see what the community wants to take action on. And the timeline, um, about 12 months, and we're, we're about three, four months into the process. So here's these topic groups I'm talking about. The, the topic groups, um, uh, the Engaging Halifax team has already gone, used our tool to think about and identify the stakeholders that they would like to recruit to, to form these topic groups. And they're gonna form three topic groups. Um, and there are, these topic groups are stakeholders with experience and knowledge of opioid and substance misuse, either through personal experience or through some other, um, if they work in the field, et cetera. And so that's where they are right now, and they're going to be reaching out and recruiting for participants in these topic groups. And those topic groups will go through those seven meetings where they'll do the hard work. Actually, all the hard work happens in these topic groups. So one thing they do, I mentioned a couple of times, this conceptual modeling or causal model creation. It's actually a fun and dynamic process uh, that they go through, through group discussion, et cetera, and they form some causal models. So this is just an example of what uh, one of the causal models developed by the Martinsville team looked like. So this was a topic group made up of service, service providers, and they here's the Here's the paperwork, it's very hands-on, and then we convert it into something that, that looks like a pretty diagram. But basically, they're thinking about all the factors that impact opioid misuse and how they relate to each other. And then they use that to say, okay, where can we take action? So this was the service provider's perspectives on that issue. This was the um, health providers. Um, so this would be uh, people who provide treatment and uh, for substance use. This was their perspective on the issues, factors affecting the issue. And then the third topic group, this was the perspective of people directly impacted by substance misuse. So you can see that different stakeholders have different perspectives and all of those perspectives are really important and valid. And so that's why we try to form these groups so that you get those different perspectives and different ideas about what needs to be done about the issue. But that's where they are right now. We're, we're recruiting for these topic, topic groups. So after the conceptual models are developed, then they go, the topic groups go through a process of brainstorming strategies based on the knowledge they've gained through doing the conceptual modeling. And this is just some ideas of uh, the types of strategy, how we help them think through strategy development, action, services, policy, systems, strategies, et cetera. And then they prioritize those actions. So, uh, they, for instance, um, 
last time in Martinsville, we had our topic groups had over 63 potential strategies for action. Uh, but, so you can't do all those things. So what we did in each topic group, they had to whittle them down to just five. So they had they might have thought of 30 ideas. They the groups top, uh, prioritize five, we come up with 15 prioritized strategies to bring to the community. Um, so, and then the community decides which of those they want to take action on. Here's an example. This was the 15 strategies that Martinsville Henry County came up with. Um, these were 15 ideas in the different categories. They said, we should do this. Um, and it's not that they won't do all of those things, but which ones are they going to start doing? So they have to whittle it down and they chose um, when we brought it back to the community, they chose three strategies. So I thought I would just show you real quick as an example what happened in Martinsville. So, of course, uh, Martinsville was identified as a community with some of the highest opioid drug overdose uh, deaths and um, hospital admissions um, in 2017. And so they wanted to do something about it. And they formed this wonderful team, community research team that worked for almost two years. Uh, on this project, both um, getting the priorities um, selected and then also supporting the work groups that did the actions. Um, they selected three topic groups made up of community residents who were impacted by the issue, healthcare providers and service providers that, that went through those seven meeting steps and developed the priority strategies. They also conducted some focus groups, which we probably will do. But um, then they came up with um, 15 really good strategy. And they brought those back to their community and their community um, decided on three, really four of those. And so uh, these are the four strategies their community chose to work on in the, in the year following the event. Uh, creating, they wanted to create a dedicated detoxification facility in Martinsville, Henry County. They didn't quite accomplish that, but what they did, they tried, they presented a proposal to the Senate and they did lots of things, couldn't quite get the funding, but what they did do was they established what they call the PACE program, which is a collaboration between the two hospital systems servicing that area and their CSB to um, receive people presenting in the hospital with an opioid or substance overdose linking them in the hospital with a peer counselor and getting them on medically assisted treatment before leaving the hospital and then shepherding them to the CSB for mental health um, follow-up, So, uh, which was a very important for that area and a, and a wonderful accomplishment. The second thing they did was they decided they wanted to form a drug court. And even though it took them two years, they now have a functional dr dr regional drug court in Martinsville and Henry County, the, a diversion program for people who are in the legal system due to some substance use issue. And then they also uh, expanded their um, student education prevention, uh, uh, substance use prevention education within all of the schools within the city and the county, and then also created kind of a community awareness campaign. So they accomplished all four of the uh, prioritized strategies that they chose, even though they had a, they had the barrier of um, COVID at the time too. So they just had some wonderful outcomes and we're hoping to see the same thing in Halifax. Of course, it'll look different because Halifax is, is a different location, but um, we're gonna follow the same process. Here are lots of collaborators too in the project. So I'm gonna stop there. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do in, again, repeat that process in Halifax uh, with Kelly and Liam and other members of the team. So any questions for me or for Kelly? And Kelly, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add to what I said. Um, no, I was just going to update on, she said the process we're in right now, um, we are at the recruitment stage and we did um, come up with three different topic groups that we want to address. Two of them are focusing on um, individuals within the community that have experienced substance use disorders, either themselves or a family member. So people that are caretakers and that kind of thing. And then we have a topic group that's EMTs and law enforcement and county administrators. And um, we also do want to do some focus groups. We want to bring in a lot of uh, people in the community 
caregivers, um, but professional caregivers, counselors, and a lot of you all with the things that you do. We, we want to, we didn't create a, folk, a topic group for that, but we're going to have some focus groups where we can hear from people that serve in those kind of roles too. So we're really excited to get started. If anybody has any questions or wants follow up, um, Kelly, Kelly sick. Kelly is a person to contact if you have a contact information. Do you all share the? Y'all have everybody. Everybody has everybody's contact information. Is that right? Just in case you had questions, and I can put my um, I can put my email also in the chat box in case you have think about something later. And and Kelly also is a is the community person who would be your contact for something, any questions you have about what's going on locally. That would be great. We're capturing um, emails through the coalition registration, but yes, if anyone could drop their um, contact information in the chat box, Mackenzie will be picking that up for the minutes of our meeting. So that'll be shared as part of the recording as well. That would be wonderful. Um, speaking on, uh, as one of the leadership team members for the coalition, um, I'll just comment to say that I would think that our leadership team would talk about that we cover three counties um, for the Southside Wellness Coalition, but that I would think that we would be able to promote um, what Kelly wants to do, and that is asking folks to reach out to her to serve um, in those different capacities that represent Halifax County, because we have membership um, that are Halifax members, resident, Mecklenburg County residents, and then Brunswick County residents. But of course, as you know, being in the Southside area and many folks work over those county lines, many have family members. Um, I do myself that live in Mecklenburg, but then also live in Halifax. So there's a lot of crossover that I think really occurs as part of the process. Um, so I think that we would probably, I would imagine, be more than happy to share. Right, right, right. To share and gather um, and invite folks to contact you, Kelly, so they could be a part of that, that outreach and a part of those roles. That would be wonderful. We have some flyers and some emails and things that will go out very soon to give okay. you more specific information and let people know how to contact us and what that process is. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's fine, because we've got a social media presence with Facebook, Instagram, with a monthly newsletter, plus we periodically blast our different events. So we're more than happy to uh, be a part of that process from the get go. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, giving us the time on the agenda. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming because opioid work is part of what we are doing in the community. So we definitely want to be a part of and be a good partner to that. Absolutely. Other questions, other questions, comments, observations? All right, so then I'm gonna um, put Mary on the spot. Mary, um, in terms of the agenda, we're now going to the Trauma-Informed Community Network updates, the updates from the Trauma Awareness and Resiliency Partners, and I know we've got lots to share. Um, yes, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. So just last night, we hosted a another screening of resilience, this time in Brunswick County at the St or the SPC for Life building, we partnered with, uh, with them to um, bring the community together and discuss that. We had a nice um, catered dinner, uh, a brief training from Keenan and the ACE, I mean ACES, she did a wonderful job. And then we, um, we watched the movie. We had a lot of great conversation and a lot of positive um, feedback in terms of spreading the message further, being invited to other organizations, churches to um, to teach about ACEs and to work, spread our message of a trauma-informed 
community. Um, so very excited about that. Very excited about the welcoming community there in Brunswick and, and the potential. Um, we are going to, I hope, have several representatives at various locations for National Night Out coming up. Um, and we are going to, I'm going to reconvene the leadership team soon so we can get some other things in motion, uh, get out there in the community and, and serve. Um, I, I think that's it, Keenan. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting? Uh, no, I don't think so. I went ahead and put up the flyer for National Night Out. When you mentioned that, certainly as a reminder, that is next Tuesday night. So if you have not already signed up to be at one of the four locations where we're going to be representing the coalition and the TICN and Southside Behavioral Health, we're going to be in South Hill, Chase City, um, Halifax County Fairgrounds, as well as Main Street in Brunswick and Lawrenceville. So if you haven't already signed up, we'll be blasting that out again today. Um, you can let me know by email if that's simple enough, but we did make a, a link that takes you right to a Google form so you can tell us specifically what area you'd like uh, to represent and then what time you can be there so that Mackenzie can I just better serve your materials and help you get set up for that night. So awesome, that's next Tuesday night. All right. Um, Wonderful. All right. Sokova update. Stephen, do you have an update or was there an update for Sokova this month? There, uh, there's no meeting this month. Uh, they do uh, an every other month thing periodically. Um, so no, nothing had changed since last month. Okay. All right. And I know that we're waiting um, for the registration for the summit to be coming out shortly from Sokova. We are. Uh, I've received no new information on that, uh, but I'm sure that uh, uh, beginning of next month when I go to the uh, meeting, we will, uh, I should have something more concrete at that point. Okay, awesome. All right, uh, Mary or Stephen, any particular updates from the leadership team that we need to take note of tonight or Liam as well? Oh, that's later. Okay. And the next leadership team meeting is going to be August the 9th. It will be in person. Well, excuse me. It will be hybrid on the evening of August 9th between 6 and 8 p.m. All right. And then going down our agenda, as we shared earlier, this is the week of the Youth, youth Alcohol uh, Prevention Project at Longwood University. Our Brunswick County sponsored team is currently there this week. So we are wishing them joy and lots of learning this week. Um, we already have scheduled um, that um, the sponsor, um, Mr. Jackson is going to be attending our leadership team meeting on August the 9th and is planning to do a presentation along with the young folks who attended the ADAP conference with him at our next uh, regular membership meeting on August the 17th. So we're super excited um, to hear about their stand plan, what they're gonna be planning for their community and their school. Um, and as a coalition, be supportive of the wonderfully creative ideas that they're doing this week. So please join us at the next leadership, I mean, the next general meeting to hear about the young folks that attended YADAP this week at Longwood University and what their plans are for their stand plan for the school year 2023 to 2024. All right. Um, awesome. And Dr. Rafi has dropped a message in the chat box. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. All right, and Mackenzie will be pulling all this stuff from the chat box for the minutes for us. All right, then on the agenda, the Coalition Readiness and Effectiveness Assessment that closed out June 30, where again, we were, we were reaching out to over our 50 plus documented members to the coalition to complete a required survey that comes from the state of Virginia, asking about the coalition's level of readiness. Um, the results of that, um, survey will be released at the leadership team meeting August the 9th, and then we'll follow back up with more information to the general membership on August 17th. But I do have a couple of tidbits to share that are exciting news. Of our 50 some plus membership, 35 of them completed that survey as of June 30th. 
So it was so Omni, our survey company was very pleased with that. We did have an incentive that went along with that. That was a um, digital Starbucks gift card since we now have two Starbucks within our catchment area, <laughs> one in South Hill and one in South Boston. So um, a 15 of the uh, folks that completed the survey um, sent us back the link. And so we successfully, I did it, we successfully emailed folks the digital downloadable Starbucks gift card and they did download them and activate them. So we're super excited about offering that incentive that worked really well. So, but again, thank you to the 35 of you that completed that survey because that is a very wonderful response to a required funding project that we had to do in less than 60 days. All right. Um, and then as we already talked about National Night Out, um, let me share the flyer again. If you haven't already seen it, it'll be sent out again next week. Um, oh, excuse me. It's not next Tuesday night. I jumped ahead there, didn't I? It's, it's two weeks. It's, and that, that, I jumped ahead. I skipped a whole week there, didn't I? <laughs> it's August the 1st, which is not next Tuesday night. It's the following Tuesday night. I'm sorry. Um, and we are going to be represented um, in four locations, I'm sharing the screen for you to see. Um, Brunswick County, downtown Lawrenceville, six to eight. Halifax County, five to eight at the fairgrounds. Oops, wait a minute, there we go. Show the screen, there it is. Mecklenburg County, uh, there are two locations this year for National Night Out in South Hill at Centennial Park from six to eight and the Chase City Pavilion in Chase City from six to eight. We would love for you to come out. We are going to be featuring information about the coalition as well as our new Trauma Awareness and Resilience Partners information as well as about Southside Behavioral Health and our many partnerships. So please join us so that you again can engage and welcome folks. And we um, have ordered some various items for giveaways. Um, we're as, just as we did last year, there is going to be a giveaway card where folks can register via QR code um, for a self-care box full of wonderful self-care items um, as such the Dr. Perry Oprah Winfrey book. And then we also are putting together some book bags full of children's supplies. So when folks come to the tables, they'll be able to register through a QR code for those two different um, packages, the self-care package for an adult and the book bag for the child. And then that link will also ask them to follow our newsletter. So we'll be able to, again, increase our outreach to folks that may not know about the wonderful works of the coalition and the TICN. Um, so again, we'll need you to come out with smiling faces and help us. Again, I'll send that link out so that you can complete the um, link to join us. Or if you simply just want to email me at prevention at Southside BH and let me know what location you're going to be attending, that's fine too. All right, so that, that brings us um, to on the agenda, the rest of the wonderful announcements that we have. Um, and that is coming up future events. So in addition to National Night Out, we are also um, sponsoring the recovery run. Um, you've probably already seen this on our social media um, where we are supporting the recovery run. We are a sponsor. If I can get my screen to work here for me, there we go. Um, recovery runs the year of the pier. It's going to be at Okadichi State Park. It was officially announced yesterday. So registration is open. Uh, we are not creating any barriers for folks. So this is a no cost run. Um, you register at the link. If you register by August 15th, you are going to automatically be signed up to receive a t-shirt which of course, since the coalition is a sponsor of this, we will be featured on the t-shirt as well. You can see that we've got many sponsors already signing on board to be a part of the recovery run. This is not gonna be virtual in any capacity though. I wanna let you know, this is gonna be our first in-person 5K run in the community supported by the Friends of Okanichi State Park. 
So super excited. Um, you have, again, if you received this yesterday in our blast, be looking for this to come out from us again. Please go ahead and register um, by August 15th to be there Saturday morning to join us. And then, of course, as coalition members, we want to set up tables and tents and be able to share information about our organization, Southside Wellness Coalition and the Trauma-Informed Care Network. Doesn't that flyer look gorgeous? I love it. You're the peer. All right, awesome. Okay, and then um, safe talk coming up in September. We've got the in-person, September is Suicide Prevention Month. So we do have a safe talk, the three and a half hour in-person suicide prevention training on September the 9th. Then we have the ASSIST training, which is the Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training. We are, have announced one for September 25th and 26th. It is going to be at the Hope Church in South Boston. Um, we're looking for folks to be registered now for those events. And of course, we also continue our virtual revive trainings and our virtual ACEs trainings. And what we're going to be soon to be announcing, but we don't have materials to share yet, is that we are going to be doing an in-person revive in South Boston at SVHEC on August 31st, which is National Overdose Awareness Day. We're going to be teaching hopefully over 100 people um, the revive process and distributing Narcan to folks who attend that on August the 31st. And we're working on a summit, an LGBTQ youth and adult summit um, in collaboration with Danville, Pennsylvania's Community Services Board. We're going to be announcing that as well. And we're working as well with the Lean In Project, leadership by Liam. So lots of wonderful programming happening. This is always a great opportunity with each of our meetings to talk about all the wonderful work that you all are doing behind the scenes between each 30 day meeting. It seems like we meet every other day and it's even, we're doing so much work and then we have to get it all together every 30 days to talk about wonderful, wonderful work that we're doing. So, so proud of you guys. I know some folks have been on vacation throughout the last 30 days. I hope everything is going well for everybody. So opening the floor um, to member updates. And if you want to share your update verbally, we'll catch it. And also you can drop it in the chat box as well. Well, Keenan, I just I just wanted to steal the mic for a second and give you a shout out and elaborate um, on the LGBTQIA summit. It is actually an extension of the key, mostly Keenan led uh, and largely Southside Behavioral Health led We Stand Together campaign, uh, which is still requesting. Uh, materials and outreach and uh, reached over 48 states um, in the U.S. And so I uh, just wanted to give Keenan and all the folks who worked on that campaign a shout out because of the success and the outreach uh, that was achieved through the We Stand Together campaign. We now get to extend that into this summit. So um, just excited to be able to do that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Again, and I'm, I'm itching over here, standing at the desk about getting our materials ready so we can start sharing that. So thank you, thank you. We're super excited about that. All right, other member updates from the floor? Okay. All right, I'm checking my chat box real quick. All right, well, so no other updates. I'm gonna mention again, um, our next leadership team meeting is gonna be August the 9th, 6 to 8 p.m. The link will go out. Um, that is for the leadership team, as well as anyone else who'd like to join our leadership team meeting. It's gonna be on August the 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. And then our regular meeting will be again next month, August 17th, again, beginning again at 10 a.m. Uh, through the hybrid link. Um, please be looking for um, all kinds of wonderful information about all the various events that we are sponsoring and the trainings. And again, please join us um, at all these various events. And of course, we're always looking for new locations um, for our trainings, the resiliency movie, 
all the wonderful good work we do. And then we'll um, certainly be talking about connecting to the seed team from Virginia Tech and Halifax County. So I'm gonna officially close the meeting at 10.50 a.m. And I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll follow back up with that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Stop this recording. <laughs> oh, no. I just um I just sent all the text from the chat box. Um yeah, I'm not getting down yet.